Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Today we're going to um, have a look at our GBB, the Green Bottle Blue. Now, you would have remembered we put her in this enclosure and we used Beardy Life as a substrate on the floor. Now, I've not been overly impressed with how this enclosure has worked out. And the main reasons being, we have bred this girl now um, twice in this enclosure. The first time we had a successful egg sack and um, she decided to eat it the day before we were due to pull it. So at 34 days she decided to eat it. Now um, she's never particularly webbed this up very well and um, she has sort of proved to be a little restless in here. Now we paired her again a second time and again, this time, she started setting up home around about a week or so before she dropped the eggs. Now, we managed to catch the web uh, blanket that she made and the eggs on the blanket. We didn't quite, we were a little bit late. We didn't see her actually laying the eggs, but she was over the eggs. So it literally had only just happened. And we set up a camera to hopefully catch her roll them all up, web them all in, and uh, and produce an actual viable sack. Now we left this camera running all night long, and what we saw in the morning was a bare empty enclosure, no egg sack, she'd eaten the lot. Now I think this was mainly down to the fact that um, she just wasn't comfortable, she just didn't feel secure enough. And I've had my, um, my doubts with these, these are, are all the care sheets tell us to keep these guys in an arid situation. Now I've kept mine with, um, I've tried them really, really arid and uh, they didn't really get on too well, so I'm well keen on that. So we've now had two failures with the egg sacs. So we're gonna fatten this girl up again, get her into condition once again, and, um, and we're gonna rehouse her now, but we're gonna do her in a different way. So we, this is all a bit of an experiment today. What I'm planning to do is to rehouse her very similar to how we do our chiller brackets. So it's going to be a little bit more of a, not a humid enclosure, but it will be a little bit more than an arid one. So before we get into that, what we're going to do is we're going to shoot over now and we're going to have a little look at the footage that we got of her with the eggs and uh, subsequently eating them. We didn't see them all get eaten, but the vast majority of them you'll see on the film, they disappeared. And this is going to be in a speeded up motion because it took something like, I think it would have been around about 10, 11 hours of footage that we actually filmed. So we're going to speed this right up and you'll get to see it. So have a look at this and then we'll get back to our rehousing. As you can see, our female here has um, she's laid a, a wet blanket on the floor of the enclosure, and uh, it's not a particularly thick blanket. Normally, when we see our females preparing to lay, they actually spend some time and and lay rather a, a thick blanket on the floor. Now this female here spent around about three days in the previous corner, the opposite corner, and um, she scooped it all out and made it as smooth as you like, very, very smooth, and put a very fine layer of web down. And then for some reason, she discarded that, and then she moved over to the opposite side of the enclosure, both at the front of the enclosure, and um, laid this mat down. As you can see there, she looks reasonably tired. Now this is um, speeded up by 20 times. We can clearly see, see the eggs there. So unfortunately we didn't see her laying them. But this is the point now where they lay them, and then normally what happens is they web a very, very fine um, mat over the top. Now, as you can see there, 
it doesn't look too good. It looks like she is pouring up the um, the side of the web in there as if she's trying to cover them up already. Now this went on for some hours. I'm pretty sure we had around about 10 hours or so of filming here. And um, we can see now she's trying to pull the sack over. So she's got some webbing actually um, around the around the, the rear edge of it that we can't actually see. Now one of the things that you'll notice here is um, with the Beardy Life, it's a very, very dry substrate and uh, it has pieces of clay and things in it which are all dry and as they get wet it can turn quite hard. And I think one of the problems we had here was as she was trying to lift the uh, the bottom of the web, it was actually picking up pieces of beardy life and what have you. Now normally that wouldn't really affect them too much. Normally they can pull the web up and it doesn't, it's a special kind of webbing that they use, a special silk, and it doesn't stick to the actual floor. So it doesn't normally bring material up with it. But you'll see as she moved over a moment ago, you can see that it's actually dragging up part of the substrate with her. Now at this point now, she's pretty much given up on any ideas of um, trying to do anything with it. And uh, you'll see there that there's quite a bit of fang movement. And she is slowly but surely devouring the eggs. Now, for whatever reason, this female was not happy in this enclosure. Now, she has had a previous sack in this enclosure. And um, she, she looked after that right up to 34 days. I was due to pull it on the 35th. She ate it that night. As you can see there, she's pulling it around now. It's also, there's a big clump of like stone or clay there that's actually hooked into the, into the web. And I think that may well have um, upset her a little bit. And that caused the problems. Hence why we are going to have a rehouse. And we are going to completely change the way we are looking after our GBB. And going forward, we are going to look for a little bit more humidity. Because we've noticed this girl is very thirsty all the time. We will see what happens. Not the outcome we were hoping for. Right. Now then, you've seen firsthand what happened. And uh, as you can see, very, very disappointing. Not the result we were looking for. So, we've tried it twice. It's not really worked. So now it's time to reevaluate what we're doing and try a different way. Now, uh, these are the GBBs are renowned for being a little bit awkward. They're renowned for being a pain to actually pair in the first place. Although we've had relatively good success with our pairings, it's the egg sacs we're struggling with now. So it's time to change everything round. So what I'm going to do, we'll leave her there for the moment. She's quite safe. I know some of you guys get a little anxious with it being on the edge of the table. It's not going anywhere. It's perfectly safe. So what we're going to do, we are going to set up a really, really simple enclosure. And we're going to put soil straight in our tank. So there is no clay balls. There's no nothing in this. We're not looking at getting any drainage because we don't want that kind of humidity. So this is just basically... Uh, our potting compost mixed with some beastie mix. So we're going to give a little bit of that. So I'm going to fill this up. We'll probably do that, shouldn't we? So this is going to be a very, very basic enclosure. And all we're going to have, as you can see, this is a piece of cork bark. And this being the shape that it is, it gives us quite a tight, secure environment under here. So what we're going to look at 
is we're going to place that in there like so and hopefully she will web this in so we're literally just going to bury that like that she'll give us somewhere to go in here so what we're looking for really is to give our spider ample security that's what we're after we're going to put a little bit more soil here what we want her to do is we want her to web up inside here that's the plan so we've got our water bowl here one thing I have noticed with our female is she does drink quite a lot so we're going to give her a nice big water bowl here to ensure that it doesn't dry out many of my water bowls I allow them to dry out for a day or two and then refill them so they've not all got constant water right what I'm going to Going to do, we're going to add that in there like that. What this is doing is this is closing off this entrance even more. So we're looking at getting a little bit more security. It'll give us something else to web to as well, hopefully through there. So this is a real, real basic enclosure. So rather than looking for something that is aesthetically pleasing, we are purely looking for something that is workable. So we'll quickly fill this up. Now this may not work. We don't know. It may not work. But nothing ventured is nothing gained. And as you'll know, with our um, Monocentrophus balfouri, they are again another spider that is said to come from a very arid um, environment and they don't require much in the way of humidity now I found with ours we have our humidity for our Balfouris anywhere between 60 and 70 percent and they breed um, they come on so well they really really do appreciate that little bit of humidity but it's understanding it we, we only want it in the air we don't want it in the soil it's mainly in the air so what we've got here as you can see this substrate is quite dark and there is moisture to it but I can squeeze that and there is nothing you see how it's hardly holding together there's very very little and you can see there look it just brushes off the hand this is not it's not wet so there, there is moisture in it and this will dry out really quick in here so what we can do then is we can literally just add some water down this front edge and this will permeate through and this will give us that slightly higher humidity but still maintain a dry environment and this is what we're playing with today this is what we're trying to achieve so very very basic not a lot to look at I must admit it's pretty uh, pretty quiet in there and to be fair um, I think uh, we'll just stick another another little branch in there this is just really just to give them somewhere just to try and add a few more anchor points as you know they do like to web up an awful lot so we're going to get our catch cup and we're going to catch her out of here all right so the easiest thing to do is we are going to remove this Right. So there she is on the on the back wall. So she's actually really in a really really good place to catch her. So we're going to get our catch cup straight on top. That's it. We're in. We can use our lid just to move her down. There we go. She's in. 
And while we got her in there, we look in here, and we can see this. This is very. This is bone dry. It's really, really dry. And one of the things I did notice here is she she built an area here, and this is where we thought she was going to lay her eggs, make her web bed. And you can see the the webbing round here is all comes round. And what they do is they pull this in eventually. But she ended up. She made it over here. And for whatever reason, she just was not comfortable. And she just destroyed the whole thing. So maybe, maybe does she want a little bit more humidity? We don't know. So we're going to just play. We're going to see. Right, we'll get rid of that. So then, what we're going to do now, we're going to place her in her new home. And we're going to see how she goes. As you can see, she's absolutely beautiful spider very very pretty and you'll notice now she only had this egg sac around about a week ago and you can see her abdomen is still nice and plump so it's got it's got a little bit of little bit of size about it still All right, we're going to pop her in There we go. Come on, madam. I'll just walk her in nice and gently. There we go. That's it, she's in. So now you can see there's a total stark contrast to the um, enclosure that she was in before. The one before was very, very much like a, a desert style enclosure. And now we've gone more in the way of what we would do with our chillabrackies. The only difference being with our chillabrackies, we would put moss and what have you in here so that we can maintain a higher humidity. What we're looking at today with the GBB is we want to increase our humidity but not to the same extent that we would for our chillabrackies so we want it to be of a similar system but with less humidity so we're only looking at increasing this up to around about 60% or so and then we're hoping that that will in turn make her a happier spider and we've also given her far more security so that we can um, she can hopefully settle down and make up home underneath this piece of bark under here this is where we want her to go and by not giving her too many other options it should encourage her to go down into here as you can see she's very calm she's nice and happy So what we will do now is we will um, we will keep an eye on this system and see what happens. And uh, like I say, it may work, it may not, but it's going to be a bit of a long-term project. So what we're going to do now is we will settle her in, we will get her back into breeding condition. It's not going to take long, she's still in holding really good condition now. So we can basically, we're going to increase her food, promote a malt, that's where we need to be next. So once we get her to molting, we can then bring her body, we can fool her body into, into breeding condition. And then we can look at mating her again. We have got a male, a subadult male. So he's sitting in the wings. He's not mature yet. And we can slow him down so that he coincides. He's got one more molt to go. And his next molt will be his mature molt. So what we're looking at is we will get her to molt. Then we will bring our male on, and then hopefully he will molt into a mature uh, male. By which time our female, her conditioning will be halfway through. So we would have been building her body up. We're giving her extra food, and um, basically we're telling her body now is a good time to be breeding. And then hopefully, by the time she is in tip-top condition, 100%, our male would have been mature for maybe two months, by which time he will be raring to go. 
he will be fully loaded and the only thing on his mind will be finding this young lady here and then we can get them together and we'll see what happens um, and then we just play the waiting game she's been good so far I think she's um, our last male he got out alive um, and I think our first male I think she ate our first male if I remember um, yeah she caught him uh, but the second one got away they have a very very long um, courtship there you go you see how she sat there she's been nice and quiet now she's just having a little move she'll be venturing around soon enough now we won't bother feeding her because we put her in a brand new enclosure we will give her maybe three or four days sometimes a week all depending on how they're behaving and then once we see that they actually settle down and they start to web up a little bit then we'll offer food I don't like to offer food straight away because sometimes in a completely new environment where your spider feels a little insecure because it doesn't know where it is it's not made it home yet sometimes a roach running around and constantly pestering them can upset them so I prefer to wait for them to set up home then we feed she can go weeks and weeks and weeks without being fed so there's no worries about her going hungry so we wait until she's happy then we feed her right well I hope you enjoyed that and it's made a little bit of an explanation as to what we're doing it's all a bit of a fun ex experiment really and we'll see what goes on right then don't forget be calm be gentle and love your spider and I'll see you soon guys